From the What Was Good Design MoMA's Message 1944 to 1956 exhibition, I have chosen to talk about Earl Silas Tupper. Earl Silas Tupper was an entrepreneur, businessman, inventor and founder of Tupperware, born in Berlin, New Hampshire, United States on July 28, 1907. Tupper grew up moving from farm to farm around central Massachusetts as a child. His father, Ernest Tupper, was a tinkerer with the intent to alleviate strenuous labour around the farm through various inventions. He was granted a patent for a device that facilitated the cleaning of chickens, but he lacked motivation operating the farm with minor success. His mother, Lulu, would often take in laundry from neighbours to earn a buck or two, also hosting a boarding house for people to stop by and stay the night. Tupper took an entrepreneurial approach to tasks and opportunities at an early age, subsequently starting a business selling the family's produce from door to door at age 10, realising that bringing the product to the customer was more profitable and enjoyable, a sale tactic that led to the success of Tupperware later on in life. He also kept a sketchbook of his inventions, which included a boat powered by a fish, a convertible top for a rumble seat, and many other novel creations. It is evident that Tupper may have found an interest in inventing from his father. After graduating high school in 1925, Tupper continued working in the family business until he was the age of 19. He then worked as a male clerk and took a course in tree surgery, which led him to start Tupper Tree Doctors Company during the Great Depression, a time of economic downturn for the USA. However, this didn't prevent the moderate success of Tupper's business. But after six years, his client base fell significantly, forcing him into bankruptcy at the age of 30. Not phased by his failure, he soldiered on, and in 1936 he met Bernard Doyle, inventor of viscoloid plastics and employee of DuPont in Leominster, Massachusetts. Tupper worked at DuPont for only a year, learning all that was conceivable about plastic at that time through experiments and research. In 1938, he started Earl S. Tupper Company in Massachusetts, with a focus on the design and engineering of industrial plastics. During World War II, Tupper manufactured wartime parts for gas masks and oil lamps through subcontracts with DuPont, funded by the government, ultimately keeping his business alive. Plastic at that time had off-putting characteristics such as strong odours, greasy texture, also being brittle and toxic. A material, in Tupper's opinion, wasn't ready for the domestic consumer market. During the Holocaust, after World War II, natural materials were scarce, forcing the mind of man to make substitutes, known as synthetics, an approach Tupper took after receiving a block of polyethylene slag from DuPont, a putrid, unworkable byproduct of the oil refining process. He began refining the slag, enabling him to create a lighter, stronger, flexible, translucent and non-toxic plastic, named poly T, holding the unique properties that traditional crockery and glass didn't a revolutionary breakthrough in the plastics industry and modern world. Once World War II ended, Tupperware and many other companies began focusing their efforts on the post-war consumer market. And in 1946, Tupper introduced his welcomeware range, which consisted of the tumbler, and later with the Wonderlier bowl and its patented airtight seal in 1948, which was modelled off an inverted paint tin rim and famous for its award-winning burp. He dreamt of the Tupperization in every kitchen. He began selling his products in department stores, but with the poor reputation of other plastics on the market, sales were dismal and business was static. It was evident that his products needed demonstration for the consumer to understand its benefits. In the late 1940s, products were taken out of stores and Tupper introduced a home party approach, a pivotal point in the success of Tupperware. Stanley Home Products, the leading distributor of Tupperware, exposed some inspirational salespeople around US, including Brownie Wise, divorced Detroit mother and professional saleswoman known for her Tupperware patio parties. Brownie's extensive Tupperware knowledge and sales attracted the attention of Tupper, resulting in her employment with the company as Vice President of Home Parties in 1951. During the 1950s, Tupperware's operations grew tenfold largely contributing to the economy and providing over 2 million job opportunities for men and women around the US. Jobs attracted mostly stay-at-home mothers and wives, allowing them to hold demonstrations in their own homes. Brownie Wise was an influential figure, empowering the voice of thousands of women. She became the face of the company and often headlined as a success of Tupperware. Running the home parties department for roughly eight years, she also chose the location for Tupperware's 1,100-acre headquarters in Orlando, Florida and began the Tupperware Jubilee for employees to celebrate, win prizes and learn about new products. But in 1958, Tupper fired Wise over a personality clash and sold Tupperware for $16 million to Rexall Drug Company. 
and at the age of 51, Tupper retired, gave up his citizenship and moved to Costa Rica with his family to avoid taxes. By that time, Tupperware was an extremely successful company. His products have earned a place in a number of museums around the world, including the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and also the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, and more. Dieter Ram's 10 Principles of Good Design. I will be discussing five in regards to Tupperware's tumblers. Good design is innovative. The materials used to make the tumblers are poly-T, a thermal plastic invented by Tupper himself. Poly-T is created from a byproduct of oil, making it easy to source. It is flexible, light, odourless, translucent, non-toxic and strong, allowing it to be moulded to any engineered specification, such as a sealable lid. Through technological development, the tumbler shows innovative design in its form. Good design makes a product useful. Tupper's tumbler is designed to store food and liquids when lid is applied, with many other practical uses including a drinking cup or toothbrush holder. Its simple form allows for consumables to be kept airtight, watertight and fresher for longer. Tumblers are also lightweight so they can be taken anywhere and stackable within each other. And with the Poly-T's translucent characteristics, it is possible to view what is stored inside the tumbler. A well-designed product with extensive research in its functional ability creating a harmonious relationship with the user. Good design is long lasting. Over 60 years ago, the tumbler was introduced to the consumer market. Interiors have since changed in kitchens, but the tumbler has never looked out of place. Even in today's throwaway society, tumblers are still being purchased as drinking cups or storage containers with a lifetime warranty. The tumbler shows longevity through its materials and function. Good design is as little design as, as possible. Tupper's Tumbler is a great example of a well-executed product that has been thoughtfully and thoroughly designed with a focus on its function. There are no non-essential parts that detract from the Tumbler's purpose, back to purity and back to simplicity. Good design is unobtrusive. The Tupperware Tumbler has no unnecessary components. Its simple, cylindrical form and lid allow for easy storage in any refrigerator, shelf, etc. Encouraging the user's self-expression in its use making for a well-organised kitchen. The non-obstructive form defines its use, allowing the tumbler to fulfil its functional purpose. From learning about Earl Silas Tupper's lifetime and his influence on history, I wondered if there are any connections between our practices. Does my practice have any direct relevance to Tupper's? I would say yes. He was an inventor and an industrial designer in some respects, focusing his efforts on the consumer market through tangible products such as the tumbler. As a graphic artist, I focus my efforts on creating designs that look appealing to the eye on paper and screen, serving the functional purpose of getting the correct information across to the viewer. If we were talking about the process in developing a product or design, there would also be a connection. Tupper went through developmental processes to fulfil all aspects of his designs and inventions, an approach I take frequently as the first idea in your head will never be a finished design. So it is important to keep a constant flow of ideas before committing to the final product, because a stale mind is a stale design. Unfortunately, Tupper passed away in 1983 from a heart attack, but to this day, Tupperware continues to hold home parties and produce new products with the Earl Silas Tupper spirit. Earl Silas Tupper, entrepreneur, businessman, inventor and founder of Tupperware.